Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Jim Atkinson from Antimony Resources. And Jim, you just put out your 43101 for Bald Hill. Tell us about this, please. Yeah, this was a technical report that basically gathered up all the information on the project that's been, you know, what's been completed on the project since it was discovered. You know, it was discovered in 2005. They started drilling in 2008, drilled till 20. 2014. So it had a fair amount of work. Plus, we also incorporated uh, the work from our phase one program, which went from April till the end of July. And we put all of that information or a professional geoscientist, I should say, put all that information into the technical report. One of the things we also did during that time was we created a three dimensional model of the mineralization. And what that allowed us to do was to do two things. First of all, that allowed us to understand how the mineralization is situated in the ground. It also allowed us to say, okay, let's calculate a volume. So what we what it happens is you create, let's say they look like saucers in the ground. That's what they look like. And the model can calculate a volume of that of that space. And so once we have the volume of that space, we can apply some factors to it to generate it into a tonnage. We ended up with 2.7 million potential tons. And then using what we consider to be our average grade of between three and 4%, we can then calculate a potential amount of antimony in situ in the ground. And that's what we reported in our, in our 43101. What it gives us, as I said, 2.7 million tons of antimony mineralization at a grade between 3 and 4%. That gives us between 80,000 and 100,000 metric tons of contained antimony. Now, I caution everybody to remember this is not a resource. This is potential. And this is potential by de determined by the qualified person and also by the, by the creation of our model. And that's where we get, that's where the numbers come from. So we haven't done enough work to confirm whether that's a economic volume, an economic uh, amount of mineralization. That's what we're ongoing right now. I would say the other thing that the model allowed us to do is it allowed us to expand the mineralization. So when you generate a model, when you don't have information, for instance, the model tends to pinch it off. So that's where you get a, that's where you get saucer shapes or disc shapes. But where the where the model is pinched off often is not because there's no mineralization there, it's because there's no information there. So what we've been doing with our phase two program is we've been testing a lot of those spaces where we have no information. And what we're finding is we're finding antimony in every drill hole we're drilling. And that means that we'd be able to theoretically expand the model to include those areas where we now have information. And, you know, theoretically, that will also expand the amount of mineralization that's there. So that's really where we are with our program. We will be starting to release assays. In fact, we just re received the, our first batch of assays back from the lab. And I, because the guys were submitting samples every, let's say, every couple of weeks, we should get assay results every couple of weeks you know, once it goes through the whole process of the lab, I would say one thing about, so we got some preliminary results back and the, our methodologies that the lab uses doesn't detect antimony greater than 1%. When you have that situation, it has to be then submitted for another type of analysis. And we're very happy when we see a whole bunch of them that have to be redone, because that means we have a whole bunch of high grade results anyway. So, so that's the situation that we have right now. So I anticipate, you know, a press release with assays, you know, in the next few days, once they rerun the samples that were too high for the, for the one technique. That is a perfect answer for my, for my next question, which is what does high grade mean for antimony? Well, I guess the way, the way to look at it is take a look at some of the projects that are being kind of promoted. And I like to talk about the project Perpetua, which is, you know, the Stibnite mine in, in Idaho. And they are being promoted. They're being, you know, money's being given to them by the U.S. government, by banks, by all of that. I would say that their average grade 
of antimony is 0.06%. Our grade is 100 times higher than that. Their, their PEA that they put out says that their first six years of mining, they'll be mining material that runs 0.4% and 0.4 antimony. Our grade average is 10 times higher than that. I would say that the grade that we have at Bald Hill in New Brunswick is the highest grade antimony deposit, certainly in North America, and it might be the highest in the world. We don't see consist consistent drill hole assays anywhere else except, you know, with this kind of high grade. We get often we get 20, 30 percent antimony that, you know, that's common in, in our drilling. So, uh, you know, again, we're we're intersecting in mineralization that is very high grade. And, you know, that, that would be something that would be very, very positive for any kind of operation decision at our mine. I will not our mine, our deposit. We don't have mine yet, but that's coming, I hope. Well, of course, that is also a perfect answer for my next question, which is, what is your timeline for moving towards production? So what we're doing right now is we're actually drilling another, you know, finishing this phase two program. When that's finished, that will give us 15,000 meters of drilling that's been done on this project in what we call the main zone, which is there's several zones of mineralization. But let's talk about what we call the main zone. And that will give us about 15,000 meters. So what we're planning on doing at that time is take a serious look at the information and say, okay, do we have enough information in, in enough detail, enough close space drilling to actually be able to start talking about determining a resource? That's a decision we'll be making in the first quarter. We will also be starting another drill program in the first quarter. We're hoping to be able to drill about 10,000 meters. That will also be, let's call it definition drilling. And during that phase of drilling, we will be having a serious look at what we think uh, we need or what we have to do a resort. So that would be first half of 2026. To speed up the process, we have actually started doing the environmental baseline work for this project. That usually takes two years, and people usually start that when they get into the environmental assessment phase, and that puts two years onto it already. So we're starting that. That will be starting with the first sampling in the spring. We're also consulting with the New Brunswick government just to try to understand, okay, what is going to be our permitting requirements, our EIA requirements. So having said that, we have that going. The other thing that we're starting to talk about is what we need to do for a pre-feasibility study. Of course, we'll have to have a resource before we can do that. But that, again, is maybe half a year to get that done. Um, you know, so we're already into, you know, maybe beginning 2027. Uh, at that time, we're hoping to have a lot of the environmental assessment work completed and a lot of the perhaps preliminary permitting work completed. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, realistically, we have to look at, you know, three, three years or so before we get to the point where there's any kind of decision on mining here. In the meantime, what we're doing also is we're talking to mining people. We're not mining people, we're explorers. So we're talking to mining people to try to get their help and say, okay, what do you think would be a realistic drill hole density? And that's a bit of a challenge for us because there is no other deposit in the world like this. And so it's going to be a challenge for us to say, okay, who's an expert on telling us how to do this? Now, I would say just as an offhanded comment that anybody that's a small, you know, that's mined a small copper mine or a small gold mine will know how to do this. The mining here we reckon is going to be very simple. It's a vertical, vertically oriented deposit. So any mining will have gravity on its side. The other thing we're starting as well is metallurgical work. There was some metallurgical work done back in 2014, which showed a very high recovery of antimony and the potential for a very high concentrate, high, high grade concentrate. But we're going to do some more detailed metallurgical work and try to understand what kind of process uh, is going to require. We think it's going to be simple. Antimony is a very simple uh, metal to, to collect in a mill. 
and uh, turn out a very high grade concentrate. My interest in asking about the timeline is, of course, antimony is a critical mineral that everyone on the Critical Minerals Institute is discussing right now. And you described it in our last interview as the critical metal nobody knows about. Would you say that's still correct or would you like to provide an update on that? No, I think it's become much more a uh, much more of a known a uh, known item. For instance, we've had discussions with the New Brunswick government, with the federal government, and you know the people that we talk to in those areas are becoming much more knowledgeable uh, on critical metals in general, but certainly on antimony. And we know the United States government is very knowledgeable on this because you know they're putting lots of money into antimony projects in the United States, and I'm sure. They have experts sitting in various offices in Washington that are experts on this. So, yes, we think it's become much more of a, of a top line item. We think, for instance, that antimony is not only a critical metal, it's a strategic metal. Antimony is so important to the military that if you don't have antimony, we think you don't have an army. And that's really where things are starting to pick up. People are starting to realize that antimony is incredibly important for the military and with all militaries expanding then you know that's again a critical place so yes i think it's becoming much more uh, of it, a commonplace for people to really know the importance of antimony and why it's why it's so critical and perhaps you're understating your own professional expertise it's my understanding that earlier on in your career you ran an antimony mine is that correct well i didn't run it i was the mining engineer and the geologist and the guy that found it underground for the miners. But yes, that, that was a great experience for me. I would say one thing about that operation. One thing I learned there was that you can have operations like ours that are just pure antimony. You don't need anything else. And the antimony concentrate that was produced at that mine, as I recall, was so high grade that it was actually purchased by other operations to mix with their concentrate to upgrade their 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 grade. And yes, the other thing about that mine is <laughs> the vein dipped very shallowly, so we didn't have gravity on our side. We had to scrape and move every single pound of rock that we made underground. So it was a bit of a different operation. But yeah, very, very, I think a very rewarding experience for me because I learned a lot about mining. I learned a lot about you know, how to design mines and all of that. Again, I'm not a mining engineer, but it was a good experience because I believe that every exploration person in the business should actually work in a mine for a little bit just to understand what it is that we're actually trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. That is the first time we have recorded that piece of wisdom. So thank you for that, Jim. And for everybody out there interested in learning more about antimony, a critical metal, critical mineral, a strategic metal, and a defense metal, please go to the following website. Thank you so much, Jim. You're very welcome. It's always great to talk to you.